if your book is on page 113. So we're looking at chapter 13, which is stairs. Okay. So we look at the stairs. So if you have stairs in your house, you'll be able to relate to this. So first of all, as always, we look at the functions and the features or the design features of a stairs. So there's two main functions of a stairs, which is very self-explanatory. The first one is to allow for safe movement between different levels. Okay, for example, moving from the ground level of your house to the second level. Okay, if you have a two-story house. And the second one is to provide a means of escape in the event of a fire. Okay, so if you're upstairs and there's a fire upstairs, you can go downstairs to get out of the house. Or if you can't get outside, certain houses you'll be able to get upstairs and jump out onto the roof through the Velux window or something like that. Okay, so they've got two design features. As well. oh, sorry, they've got five design features as well. So as we said, safety, tying in with the second function. Ease of use, okay, so make them as easy as possible to use. Strong and stable, so strength and stability. Certain amount of sound insulation, okay, to reduce the noise of people traveling up and down the stairs. And the aesthetics, okay, so a lot of people will get them made out of different types of wood and so on because they think they look nice, okay. Um, so that's the design features so we look at them in more detail now the five of them okay so this will be in your book on this will be the first question on your book sorry the second question okay so you need to explain the five design features you can put these into your own words okay so the first one was safety so in terms of safety building regulations ensure that a stairs is designed to be as safe as possible for all users okay so there's certain building regulations or design regulations that need to be met if you're making stairs for a house okay the second one then was strength and stability so a stairs must be constructed to safely support its own weight along with any expected weight that may be placed on it so that will be people walking up and down carrying stuff etc it must be made of appropriate materials and securely constructed okay so it needs to be securely constructed so that it won't move and the materials that a stairs is usually made out of, I'm sure you all know, would be timber is probably the most common one in Ireland. It can also be made out of metal. Okay. And then some people might put carpet and stuff on the stairs, but that's all to do with aesthetics. Okay. How it looks. Um, number three is sound insulation. So a stairs should not be excessively noisy when being used. With the correct material selection can have a large impact on sound insulation. So for example, so this is what I was referring to a minute ago, a carpet finish would reduce noise or constructing a concrete stairs, okay? So yeah, and uh, I suppose shopping centers and um, industrial estates, they would usually have concrete stairs, okay? So there'd be very little noise out of a concrete stairs. Uh, so the steps would be made out of concrete and then sometimes they might put a wooden floor finish on it or a carpet finish on it okay in terms of your house usually they'd be made out of wood or maybe metal and a lot of people might put a carpet finish on it it's just to reduce sound insulation okay the noise of people traveling up and down the stairs number four then is the ease of use so you want the stairs to be designed so that it can be used without a conscious effort in other words it's easy so each step should be the same size and they must be size yeah, they must be sized to suit a typical user. So generally, there's a general rule of thumb for designing the stairs. We'll be looking at them now shortly. Okay. But all the steps should be the same size so that basically when you're going up the stairs, that it's kind of it's one of these things that become, I suppose, a habit where you don't even think about the steps. You're just going up because you get used to the steps. Okay. Number five is the aesthetic. So that's the overall looks, how nice they look, I suppose. Uh, the main stairs is often the first thing people see when they enter the house. Okay, so people enter your front your front door, usually that would go through the hallway and there might be a stairs there in front of you. Okay, so it's aesthetics design, uh, therefore is important to the overall impression of the house. Okay, so when people come in the front door, usually the stairs will be one of the first things they see. So um, I suppose it gives a first uh, impression. 
when you enter a house. Okay. So that's the design features. So we're going to move on now to look at the different parts and of the stairs. So this is on page, still on page 113 in your book. Okay. Most of these you'll be aware of. Okay. So obviously the first one being the actual stairs itself. The stairs is defined or described as being a number of steps and it might have a landing on it that basically leads from one floor level to another. Okay, so everyone should know what a stairs is. You obviously won't get asked this in exams, too simple. But a stairs is a number of steps that may or may not include landings that lead from one level to another. Okay. Uh, the stairwell is the space occupied by the stairs. So the stairwell is kind of the area, say, in your hallway that the stairs takes up. Okay. The flight. So if someone says a flight of steps or a flight of stairs, a continuous set of steps from one floor to another floor, or it could be from one floor to a landing. Okay. So if you look at the image here, if you take this here area here at the bottom as just the ground level, you can see here there's a landing. A landing is basically a big step. Okay. So you might have them in areas where there's maybe a door leading off to a different floor level or something like that. Okay, so that's a landing. Sometimes it's just a big kind of step. All right, you would have a landing maybe if your stairs is in a corner and it's turning a corner. There would be a landing, in other words, a bigger step. Okay, so basically what a flight is, is the number of steps that go from, say, in this case, the ground level to the landing. So it's one, two, three, four. And then you would have another one from the landing to, say, if this was the second floor. Okay. So there's whatever, four or five steps in there. Okay, so that's what a flight is. If there's no landing, the flight would be the full length, the continuous set of steps from one level to the other. Okay, so that's what a flight of steps is, or a flight of stairs. A landing, so we kind of described what a landing is. I'm sure you know what it looks like. A landing is basically a flat space between two flights of stairs, if you like. It provides a rest space and it can also be used to change the direction of the stairs. Okay, so it's kind of a rest space. It's just a bigger step. Um, usually you'll have one in your house if your steps or your stairs are changing directions. Okay, so even some people might have steps that go up straight and then you get to a certain area where the landing is and then you get an option of going right or left. Okay, so your stairs kind of branches off to two different directions. Okay, again, that'll be an example of a landing. All right. Now, so this is still on number three. Okay. Uh, so we have another few to look at. These are the more technical terms, as opposed that you might not have heard of. Some of them you might have heard of. The thread. So what is the thread? The thread is the upper surface of a step. Basically, it's the part where your foot is placed on. Okay. So you can see here the thread is the part of the step that you actually walk on, okay? The riser then is this part here that goes from one step to another, if you like. It basically joins them together. Some steps might not have a riser, which means they have a big gap between the steps, okay? But the riser is the vertical member between the two, two threads, okay? So the thread is the part you step on, and the riser is the part that basically rises in between them to join them together, okay? Uh, the string then, the string is a sloping board at the sides of the stairs that supports the thread and the riser. Okay, so a string is the part on the sides of the stairs that basically supports both of them. Okay, we'll look at that in more detail later, but you can see it's kind of outlined by the, there's a red outline here as well, we'll be looking at that in a minute. Okay, but it's just the part on the side. All right, the handrail, everyone should know what the handrail is, it's obviously the part you can put your hand on. It's a safety guard and an aid for a person climbing the stairs. Okay. The bolsters then are the parts in between the handrail and the actual stairs. Okay. So that's these pieces here. So they're kind of a darker wood here. So the bolsters, they're the timber that supports the handrail and prevents people from falling off the stairs. Okay. And then you have the balustrade. So the balustrade is... 
the term for both the entire baluster and the handrail system okay so you wouldn't usually people about here wouldn't usually use that word but if you do get it in an exam or anything it's basically the balusters plus the handrails that whole kind of unit all right so in certain countries they might actually have a balustrade constructed before they actually take the stairs into a house and they would just fit that onto the stairs usually here we would just um, talk about the handrail and the balusters okay then the new post ends a big post at the top and the bottom of the stairs so here so it's a big post people sometimes hang their coats and stuff on it so the new post is the post at the top and the bottom of a flight of stairs which supports the handrail and the string okay so basically the string here at the side will be jointed into the new post and also the handrail will be jointed into the new post at both the top and the bottom of the stairs okay all right guys if you're following the book there just as we go I'll save you doing it later on the top of page 114 you have to label the parts of the stairs these are the parts that you need to label so one being the handrail two being the baluster three is the thread four is the riser and five is the uh the string okay sorry there's six as well so six is the new post all right so you need to label them six parts and moving on then so again that's just kind of I suppose a little model that somebody would have made for their leaving their construction of a stairs okay very good model to make but uh, it's just showing you the different parts of the stairs so you have the string which is the side part on the far side you have the risers here the tread and there's a few bits then that I suppose we haven't looked at yet in here there's a wedge basically keeps the steps from falling down and in here there's a kind of angle block or a wedge if you like that kind of just joins the step and the riser together is kind of a support you have the new post here and you have a nosing what the nosing is if you look at this step here it's just the rounded corner of the steps okay it just looks nicer if it's rounded all right now number five so what we're doing now is we're going to explain some of these terms okay now so if someone asked you what's the total rise of your stairs basically the total rise of the stairs is the overall height of the stairs from the ground floor to the first floor okay so the total rise is basically how much your stairs has to rise from the ground floor to the first floor the second floor whatever you want to call it okay then b there is the total going so the total going is the overall length of the stairs measured from the nose of the first step to the nose of the final step okay so remember we said the nose is basically the front part of the step so the total going is the length from the first step to the second or to the top step the last step okay okay so this is what these measurements would look like so first of all the total rise basically ground level to the second or first floor whatever height that is okay eight foot or whatever it is okay then the total going is measuring from basically the nose of the first step to the nose of the final step okay that's the total going so it just gives you two different measurements that you would need if you're building stairs to suit a certain house okay then we have the rise part c so the rise is the vertical height of each step when measured from the top of one thread to the top of the next thread okay so if we look here we have a magnified image here okay so the rise is basically one step to the other top surface of this one to the top surface of that one okay then the going then is d the going is the horizontal distance of each step measured from either the nosing of one step to the nosing of the next step or the front okay or sorry from the front of one riser to the next okay so in other words it's the horizontal distance so it's a straight distance okay as you can see here from one nosing to the next nosing okay so it doesn't include the overall length of the step it's just kind of the going is the distance between the nose or the edge of one step to the edge of the next step the steps will always overhang okay so they'll always overhang over the riser here okay and the other way you could do it which basically gives you the same measurement is to start here 
at that point. So you're basically not including the overlap of the first one, but you're including the overlap of the next one. Okay. Whereas here you're measuring it, including the overlap of the first one and not the overlap of the second one. Okay. So it's the exact same measurement. It's just two different ways of measuring the going. Okay. So very important. You know what the total rise is. It's basically from the ground floor to the first floor. The total going is kind of the length of your stairs, if you like, from the first step to the very last step. The rise is the rise from the top surface of one step to the top surface of the next step, or the thread, if you like, so one, the top of the thread to the top of the next thread. And then the going then is the horizontal distance kind of between the nose of one step to the nose of the next step. Okay. Uh, what are we on next? F is the pitch line. Sorry, I skipped either. E was the nosing. Okay, so again, the nosing is the distance the thread projects beyond the riser, usually the thickness of the thread. So basically, this distance here that the um, step or the thread overhangs the riser is usually the thickness of the wood. So if your thickness, if the wood is 20 mil thick, usually that will be a 20 mil thickness here that it overlaps. Okay. Then the pitch line then, so we get a new image up here. So the pitch line is an imaginary line connecting the nosing of each step, indicating basically the slope or the pitch of the step or the stairs. Okay. The edge of the string should be a maximum of 50 millimeters away from the pitch line. Okay. So the pitch line is basically just an imaginary line that joins each step together. So if you put a straight edge or a level on each step, okay, you would actually be able to measure the angle or the degrees or the pitch or the slope, whatever way you want to say it, of the stairs in your house. Okay. And then 50 millimeters basically is that you want the string, which is the side piece of your stairs, to be higher than the steps, just so that you can't see the steps from the edge. It also gives you a kind of surface to joint the risers and the threads into. Okay, so it should be about 500, or sorry, about 50 millimeters. Okay. And as you can see, there's a max there as well. You wouldn't really want it any bigger. Okay. So that is the parts of the stairs. Uh, sorry, you just need to fill in number six there as well, which is just the 50 millimeters. Okay. So the edge of the something should be the maximum of something away from the pitch line. So your answer there is the edge of the string should be a maximum of 50 millimeters from the pitch line. Okay. And we can move on then to the next one. Using annotated sketches show the total rise, total going. Okay, so the sketches they are looking for there is these sketches here. So you need to draw these sketches in for number seven, guys. Okay. So I'm just going to move on here now. now. So we have eight, nine, ten, eleven to look at. So we've done in a minute. Um, so now we're looking at kind of constructing the stairs. Say if we're constructing stairs for your house. So number eight is. Just looking through the method or the process, so you'll have to write these in your own words or just write bullet points there at the top of page 115. So to construct the stairs, the inner and the outer string are routed, in other words, cut 12 millimeters to accommodate the thread and the riser. Okay, so basically you have a string either side, basically two side pieces either side of your stairs, and you can see here there's kind of routers or cuts made into these for the string and the risers to fit into on both of them. It's just a kind of a joint. Okay, so we can slot them in and fix them. Okay, so that's the first step is to cut the inner and the outer strings roughly about 12 mil in thickness. So that we'll cut 12 mil down and this will allow us to a joint area to fit a riser and string into. Sorry, the riser and the thread. Okay. Number two then, the thread and the riser are then wedged in place using wooden wedges. Okay, so we wedge them in. So you can see the wedges here. It's just angled pieces of wood that are put in. Number three then, additional support is added by angle blocks glued to the thread and the riser. These prevent the threads sagging and uh, growing creaky. In other words, making kind of noise as you walk up and down. Okay. So you can see that's the angle blocks in there. They're just support pieces and it stops basically the steps from kind of 
squeaking as people walk up and down. All right, they don't move basically. Okay, so that's the first three steps. And this again is what it would look like on the image. Okay, so say this is the, the sideboard or the thread. The riser will fit in here. Okay, the thread will fit in here. And that will be on both sides. Okay, and then we wedge them together. Okay. Number 10 then, guys. Sorry, you need to label them parts as well. Uh, let's go back. So you need to label the parts of the image there. This one here. Okay, so you need to, the riser, the thread, the two strings. So you have, one will usually be up against a wall, one will not be. If your stairs is in the middle of the room, we'll define it by a right string and a left string. Okay, because you'd have no string up against the wall if it's in the middle of your floor. Usually a lot of houses would have the stairs up against the wall. Okay, so you'd have one that you just label a wall string. That's the one that goes along the wall. Then the outer string. You need to label the angle blocks and the wedges as well. Okay. Okay, number 10 then. Um, so we're looking at the landing, basically. So what do you need to do here? You need to draw a neat annotated sketch of how a string is attached to the new post. And then, yeah, so that's number 10. Okay. So the string is mortised to the new post. So anyone who done junior shirt woodwork will know what a mortise joint is. So it's just to form a joint. A mortise and tenon joints are pinned by dowels driven into a hole through the new post and the tenon. The holes in the new post and the string are drilled slightly off center. So when the dowel is hammered in, it draws them together. Okay, so basically it closes the joint. Okay. Uh, the new post is housed over the trimmer joist. Okay, so it's another form of a joint, a housing joint. And then the handrail is mortised to the new post. So basically what they're saying here is the string is fixed to the new post. Okay, using a mortise and tenon joint. The new post and the trimmer are housed together, which means they're jointed together. And then the handrail is mortised onto the new post, which means the handrail is basically jointed onto the new post as well. Okay, so if we look at our image over here, this is our new post. So this will be for the top. So this will be the stairs going up to the top into maybe your second floor. This is your new post. This is the flight of stairs coming up. And this is our trimmer. This will be a, the trimmer would be a piece of wood that would already be fixed from doing your roofing. Okay, so you should remember that word from roofing, trimmer, or so you could call it a joist even. All right. Um, so where do we start? We start here. So the string is mortised to the new post. So this is basically a mortise joint cut out, and it'll fit in here to the new post. Okay. Uh, the new post uh, is being bolted to the trimmer, so bolted or screwed, whatever way. And then the holes for the hardwood dowels are here. Okay. And basically, dowel is a round piece of wood that you can put in between two pieces of wood and it basically joins them together. Okay, so it's just a joint. Then the riser and the nosing are housed into the new post as well, up at the top part. Okay, so if we look at kind of an animated version of that, these are three pieces here. So you have your new post. Okay, this is the stairs. If you like the string, it's gonna be fixed in here. Like that. Okay, so that'll be your mortise and tenon joint. Then the two holes, then they would put um, a fixing or a dowel into them. Then over here, then you can see the dowel joint just joins the handrail onto the new post. Okay. Uh, that's just another 3D kind of looking at the stairs. Okay, so again, these are the, the kind of joints cut out for the threads and the risers, and the wedges will go into them. And then this is what the kind of twin mortise would look like. A mortise and tenon. It would have to be fixed then onto the new post. All right. Um, so there is your sketch. So I suppose that's the sketch they're looking for in number 10 there. It's to just show how they're fixed together. Okay, and label the joints. So you'll have a mortise and tenon joint. And you'll have your dial joints. Okay, and then you'll have your housing joint as well. Okay. Uh, the landing trimmer then, I suppose if we're looking at that, uh, you'll be asked to draw this on number 11, I think. Okay. Um, 
so basically this is a 3d of our stairs going up to our second floor if you like our first floor this is just a capping on the top of the newel post it's just designed sometimes people have a nice fancy one that's kind of round in shape your newel post is this piece here okay you'll see a newel drop it's just that the newel post comes down below your ceiling on the ground level so if you're standing on your floor at ground level and look up you'll see the post coming down our handrail is here again there'll be a bit of a handrail here called the landing handrail so it's labeled over here actually this is our string and the outer string okay uh, so it's just looking at the a kind of 3d view of the stairs this is a different kind of a version of one then this will be one that'll be up against a wall i suppose okay again you have your cap and pass there you have your cap and up here your landing handrail this would be your handrail from the stairs your balusters are here the pieces that go from the handrail down to the stairs okay your floor rail and so on all right and the pink part here would be the plasterboard for the ceiling for the floor below okay so just to go through them two sketches i suppose in more detail uh you're asked to draw them out now don't worry about the measurements we'll worry about that when we get back to school and we actually draw the stairs i suppose this is what the basic stairs detail will look like when you're drawing it out again there'll be a lot of measurements okay this is a very basic stairs detail okay it shows the rise the going and so on then you'd label different parts such as the handrail your bolsters and your newel post and so on okay this here sheeting here is basically if you don't have a press underneath your stairs basically they put a sheeting underneath it at an angle it just covers all the joints and stuff from the steps okay it's just sheeting okay that's just 10 mil sheeting all right um yeah so that's all your parts labels um we'll leave it there for today guys i think um well, I'd imagine that was fairly straightforward probably until we got to the part of maybe constructing the stairs we probably will revise constructing stairs again um it's just the steps it's just anyone who didn't do junior show woodwork won't know what the joints look like obviously these are more detailed joints okay a, a typical mortise and tenon joint that we would have done on junior show woodwork would be just straightforward whereas here you can see for a stairs you know the joints are more detailed okay here mortise and tenon so there's it's kind of a double mortise and tenon if you like if you remember that from junior show woodwork where it's basically got two tenons all right it fits into two kind of holes or two mortises all right guys so I'll, just, I'll stop the video here first